There's a microphone. Conscious of the benefit to the state 
and indeed to society as a whole, arising from the unpaid and very often unsung efforts of those who year in, year out, promote the cause of greater participation in sport. It is right and proper, therefore, that tonight you should sing their praises, and if one organization can be singled out as being to the fore in this area, I can take some pride in the magnificent efforts of the members of the Garda Shikana in this regard. The very ably led for a long time by Eamon O'Darkey, who I'm ever so glad to see with us here tonight. Their unique position in the community has enabled them to play a vital role in the promotion of all sport. And I have not statistics to prove that those involved in sport as against those not involved, appear less often as defendants in judicial cases throughout the country. But we do not need statistics to prove it. It is a self-evident fact. And I can, however, say quite categorically that the community is indebted to you and the state is indebted to you for your unselfish and untiring efforts on behalf of all our people. I know it is no easy task uh, trying to organize clubs and individuals properly on an ongoing basis, uh, from week to week, and indeed from year to year. The people here who are involved are involved in making fixtures, making tea, arranging for transport, calling to doors, raising finances, encouraging, exhorting, and sometimes cajoling young people into training and competitions, washing jerseys, preparing pitches, getting referees, hiring facilities, and all this at very great personal inconvenience to yourselves and to your families, and certainly at no small cost uh, to yourselves. I have a reasonable idea myself from the, my own profession that to set an organization going uh, once in, say, whatever period of time that I have to do it, and I'm sure this time it will be four years. <laughs> and quite honestly, I can only marvel how you people involved in sport uh, can do this on a yearly basis. I, I have no hesitation whatsoever in saying that with your organizational abilities and enthusiasm, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'm quite sure you'll be welcomed with open arms into any political party, and you'll have a very bright future there. <laughs> you'll probably have more sense. <laughs> it is important that we remember that the people involved are the moulders of a positive public opinion on a healthier way of life. And the difficulties which are encountered and have to be surmounted are an example of how we as a nation should approach all our difficulties, surely with spirit and with enthusiasm and of course with commitment. I'm sure that we're all aware of the particular difficulties uh, associated with two of your category winners, Special Olympics and Paralympics. No, nonetheless, they made, the possible, they made possible what people would regard as the impossible, and were ever so proud of them. All of the people uh, provide an invaluable service to the community and to the country, and surely uh, we're all the richer for their efforts. And if by my presence here tonight, Mr. Chairman, uh, if I have managed to convey the government recognition of the value of the tremendous service which you continually give, well then I'm very pleased indeed that that would be so. I would like to pay a very special award, uh, a tribute to the Limerick City Sports Advisory Body for inaugurating this unique award ceremony which is now in its sixth year. And it is only fitting that those who work tirelessly uh, and very often go unnoticed should have uh, their services recognized publicly. Indeed, if I might say to the two very honourable gentlemen here who are sitting on my right tonight from Cusport, uh, Raleigh Delaney and Damon Doherty, I think it's something which Cusport at national level could very well take on board. Finally, I want to compliment all those uh, associated with the project and I congratulate the recipients and commend all those unknowns who work for a better and a healthier society. It's my privilege to be here and like the chairman, Joe Brooks, said before he started, it was lovely to hear the very fine music from those involved with the city of Limerick, the EC. And I wonder, surely, if among the repertoire they have Limerick, you're yeah, yeah. Thank you very much.
funds, uh, we are indeed uh, uh, deeply indebted to you uh, for giving up your time uh, to be here with us tonight. Uh, we truly appreciate it and uh, we look forward uh, to you being amidst us or in our midst in the future. Thank you once again. Uh, Now it is uh, my pleasure to call on a gentleman who is a living legend, a legend in his own lifetime, the only gold medalist uh, in Ireland over the last 50 years in track and field. I call on uh, the chairman of course, for Mr. Ron Delaney.
many fine people, and Noel John Gould, the chairman of our finance committee, made a very important contribution to our deliberations over the year. And very briefly, the breakthrough was to secure a permanent source of funding for sport. This came about with the decision to introduce a national lottery, and of course, currently the government decision to spend on a national sports centre, on regional sports centres, on making uh, Thoman College a centre for elite sport. This type of new era in Irish sport is just dawning, and as I said, I think it is enormously exciting and enormously productive, because there's nothing better for our community, for our country, than to make the facility of sport available to all. But having said that, and seeing the direction that sport is going to go over the next few years, the one thing that must be protected is the voluntary nature of sport itself. The essence of sport is its voluntary nature. It is the man who spends hours preparing the pitch. It's the man who spends hours administration, administrating. It's the ladies who do the same. It's the coaches, it's the people who provide the transport, and all doing it voluntarily. What we've got to do is protect this voluntary dimension of sport within the future structures of sport. Because if it goes, I think sport will be very much to lose. Minister, ladies and gentlemen, it's been my great pleasure to attend the Sports Service Awards dinner again, and I look forward later to congratulating each of the recipients personally when I present them with the awards. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Ron. Now, uh, finally, I would like to call on uh, Mr. Frank Lynn, Chairman of Limerick City BEC, uh, to say uh, a few words to you on behalf of the committee. Frank. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Minister, Reverend Follower, Reverend Sisters, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. One of the most pleasant duties I have as Chairman of the Limerick City BEC is coming to cost for annual functions, and this is the sixth occasion which I have been present. And it gives me great pleasure to be here and to congratulate all concerned, especially those receiving their awards here tonight. But as chairman of a statutory body, the main purpose which is education, it gives me an opportunity here briefly this afternoon to refer to a decision made by government some weeks ago. And I, as chairman of that authority, statutory authority, would like to express to the Minister of Commons and ask him to convey to his government the appreciation of all education in the region, the whole Midwest region, with the decision of the government to grant the university status in Limerick some weeks ago. has been widely, very well received in this region. Because the demands have been made on previous and successive governments for a decision on the matter of a UCF. We welcome the decision and we look forward for many years of a growing university in the world. I am particularly pleased with the initiative and the, uh, the thought-provoking schemes undertaken by Limerick City Advisory Body. Their brief is clearly visible from the work they have undertaken. It is certainly sport for all and in the worthwhile causes which have benefited in the past and tonight <coughs> I'm happy to note that Milford Hospice is to be the tournament of the function here this evening. As a sports body, you represent many different disciplines and understanding the work of Limerick City Sports Advisory Body, you are taking on an extra load, on many overburdened shoulders. And on behalf of my committee, therefore I would like to express our sincerest thanks to you. In Mary Castle, your Honorary Secretary, you have a person with very few equals in that role. And again, I must offer my sincere thanks to her for the tremendous work she has undertaken for in that capacity. Much of which has been taken place here tonight would not have happened without the ability of Mary Castle. From my own 
parts as chairman of the Limerick City DSC, whatever assistance we can give, be in the nature of grant aid assistance or whatever, I and my committee will be very too glad to ensure that the good work which we have undertaken in the past will continue and prosper with a full backing of the Limerick City BEC. Thank you, Mr. Excuse me, uh, please excuse me, we have the names on them and I have to. <laughs> 
Since then, he has been chairman of the club. That's over 11 years now chairman of the club. He was also served as vice chairman of the Limerick Clare Regional Board in 1985. This year, he was appointed captain for an unprecedented second term. He was also made a life member of the Pardeen Club, which again was the first time in the history of the club that this has happened. During the past 17 years, he has chaired many committees in the club, some good committees, some not so good. If it wasn't for the commitment that he had and the interest in the club during the bad years, the club would not be today what it is. Joe is a family man and he can be seen on some occasions going to his second home straight from work, that is the party in Pitchell Hut Club. You can see him there and doing out the pitches or whatever has to be done, cutting the greens or doing whatever jobs that have to be done, he's there to do them. <coughs> Joe, although he's a life member, would still have to pay because he sponsors many of the tournaments that are held in the club. This award has been, the nominators of this award were the 120 club members and they felt that he richly deserved this and that it would, he would appreciate this award and for his devotion to the game of pitch and putt. Thank you. Mary with uh, Pat O'Brien who was who played with the dare 
became involved and uh, they put great emphasis on coaching, particularly at uh, juvenile level. And they have juveniles from all of the clubs in the county uh, participating in regular coaching events. Um, they have Sue Peard, who was a well-known coach down from Dublin, several times uh, during the, the playing season. And um, the they children really benefit from this. Mary is also a member of the executive of Limerick uh, City and County Badminton Association. And really, I just don't know where she gets the time to do all of that. And I would like to call on her to accept her award. Bill Logan has all the qualifications for this award here tonight. And many more. He is a very quiet, very shy, very dedicated man. And as the citation there shows, for the last 20 years he has been uh, helping out the young athletes from the ages of 8 and 9 upwards. And his club has had fantastic success. Many of his athletes have gone on and have been international and have won many Irish titles. And as the citation shows, uh, five evenings a week and two mornings, he's out there with all these young men. He pays the same attention to the very talented and to the champion as he does to the beginner. And he speaks individually to each one of them at every training session. He's also a great father and a great family man. And I've often seen him out on the quiet roads around Clare. His daughters, the two of them, are household names in long distance running. And they often have to go on 10 and 12 mile runs. Well, Bill is there with them, keeping an eye on them. He's right because they are very attractive young ladies. <laughs> and you should see them, especially in their athletic fit. <laughs> <laughs> he is uh, interested in all sports. And I say, Ronnie Long often told me he's a genius when it comes to sports quizzes. Uh, I hope you won't mind my saying this. He does have a hearing aid, a slight problem actually, a type of hearing. But he uses this as an advantage. When at club meetings, uh, things get heated. As you all know, this does happen at club meetings. Bill switches on. <laughs> and puts on an expression that's what I would call um, puzzled nonchalance. It's not going on. And he's there completely neutral. Uh, Bill Logan is a gentleman and a gentleman. And he's the most worthy recipient of this prestigious award. Bill Logan. Now, as he may not be with us for too much longer, 
Uh, this is because of his habit of pushing his lawnmower around our pitch within 10 yards of the practicing batsman, <laughs> completely oblivious of cricket balls flying past him at high speed. One of these days his luck will run out. <laughs> As Mary points out, when Peter changes his car, his main consideration is how his new car may serve a cricket club. This, of course, is a throwback to the days when car ownership guaranteed were a team place. <laughs> we confidently expect Peter to compete for a first team place this year by arriving at the ground with a new 45 seat luxury coach. <laughs> the point that Mary did not refer to is that Peter is captain of the Limerick's Ramblers team. This team is made up of old legs and youngsters who would not otherwise get a game. Peter is never worried about travelling long distances with the weakest of teams, despite the near certainty of being heavily beaten. His colleagues were charmed by this approach, which they thought to be unique, until they realised that it has been practised for some years by the English test selectors. <laughs> Peter contributed handsomely on the plane pitch during 1988. He scored a vital six and held the winning catch in the Munster Junior Cup final. He also won a Munster Senior Cup medal and completed a hat-trick of personal achievements by making his first ever half century. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, on a more serious note, Limerick Cricket Club has had many swings of fortune throughout its 21 years. At times during the 1970s, it seemed that the club must die. That it did not, but has become instead the strongest club in Munster. This is due to the dedication of a small group of people, many of whom are down there, and especially to Peter Nicholson. <laughs> involvement is community games, which goes back to about 1977 when we set up a separate community games committee. He's looked after community games football with great success ever since. But it's really not the success that matters to Joe. It's the fact, as Father Carroll says, every time I see him, the car is full of young fellas and Joe is smoking a cigar. <laughs> He's been chairman of the community games committee for a few years. And this year, there was a little difficulty. The person who took it up originally uh, had to pull it out after a couple of months, and back came Joe again to look after it. His teams, well, what can you say about somebody look after teams? They have great skill, great basic skill, basic skill that was taught in the rain and in the mud, and which is put into practice during a game, maybe for 40 minutes, probably hiding hours and hours of work that was put in. Hours of commitment, hours of patience, Hours of courtesy, hours of treating young people uh, with dignity. He, he has helped all teams in the area, regardless of the sport. He's always available uh, to help them out with transport. I know Mary has a stopwatch going now, but I have to get through a few more things. The one thing about him is he has a great sense of humour. And uh, anything he does, he does it with a smile. I often think that he's worse than the young fellas himself at times. <laughs> Then, I think a few years ago, the scouts were stuck for leaders. So Joe really practices this thing. There is a saying, I think a lot of people who do volunteer work say, if you're looking for somebody to do, to do something, give it to somebody who's busy, because they'll always find time to, they'll always find an extra hour. He's given dedication, loyalty, and I suppose most of all, he's given enthusiasm. 
Uh, I was with him personally in Galway for that quincentennial in 1984. We took a team down there from the Napierce Club. And uh, we, we were staying in a hotel, and I think our star player hit his head on a light or something and required a few stitches. And of course, the question was put to the doctor, can this young lad play? Well, said the doctor, if he had some kind of a head guard. No problems to show, I've relations off the road, I'd go and get a body helmet. <laughs> we went on the next day, and we won that competition. I heard years afterwards that Castle Island Desmonds had won an All-Ireland Championship with a player uh, having a helmet. But I'm afraid Joe Hallam was ahead. That was about 86, this was in 1984. <laughs> Same match, we were in terrible difficulties. <coughs> the time was running out, we were about a pint up, and the other team looked as though we were going to equalise. The ball we did, just skinned, I said, was wide, and he went the young part gave it wide. I said to Joe, we were lucky there. No problem, he says, that young fellow was related to me. <laughs> We had, we had slight trouble with concussed during the week. Maybe we didn't address the, the level. So Mary got on to me, she said, you know Joe? I said, I do indeed, I'm on with the house. And uh, she said, is there any chance you deliver the letter? But she said now, like, don't, don't let, him, let, him, let him start to see what it is for himself. When I got there, Joe was at work. And uh, Anne was there, his good lady wife Anne. And she, I gave her the letter and I was trying to make as little as possible. And there's this girl in the VEC, Mary Costello, and she asked me to deliver that. And she says, that's probably from, uh, it's going to look for money from the lottery, but you know what it is. That's how I leave it there on the table. And you know, Minister Collins went through a lot of things there. And uh, he said about, uh, he went through a whole lot of them. I said, yeah, Joe Hallam was there, and everyone did he get to the washing of the jerseys. I said, no, Joe was not in that one. And he looks after the jerseys. <laughs> She's an active member of the Residents Association. Joe's son is an active member of the Scouts and takes part in sport. Uh, it's a great honour for me, as I said, and now I give you Joe Hallam to receive a most deserved award. He has not alone done it for himself. In 1984, 
he was on the panel for the LA Paralympics uh, and narrowly missed a place to travel himself. <coughs> Some of his activities, uh, the most noteworthy of which are those which involve youth within the wheelchair association. Uh, there are two particular individuals, uh, Andy Murphy and James McCarthy, who have achieved two junior caps. This two marathons work. Uh, hours spent both traveling, using his own car, uh, hours spent training and looking after and guiding them. There is one other young man uh, uh, that I wish to mention, John Thun, and with the, these other two, they are expected in the very near future to achieve uh, Irish senior caps. Now, that, in some small way, just gives you a, a little bit of, of what he has done. Uh, last year, the Limerick Club received the Coop Cullen Award for the best club in the country. And the 10 years that Martin had worked with it, he brought it from absolutely nothing to the best in the country. This is no main achievement for the man. The, one other item that, that was mentioned, the annual <coughs> Limerick Regional Chapters, Track and Field Chapters, which are held in Tolman, and which in conjunction with uh, a very hard working committee in Tolman, Martin has organised, is one of the most popular in the country and considered to be the most successful. It is a residential weekend uh, which athletes travel from all over the country. He is involved in organising the catering, uh, transport, accommodation, entertaining, and uh, gathering the athletes. <coughs> that I, I, I will leave with his activities. I would like to state the, the following. Uh, the obstacles which he has overcome himself and the experience he has gained and learned, he passes on to those uh, who have to face the same predicament. I know that uh, some in the Pitcher Association would probably consider it slightly patronising, but I have to admit to being highly embarrassed when it comes to listening off this man's activities in view of what most of the rest of us have and would never manage uh, to compare. <coughs> I am extremely privileged and very happy to recommend this man for a most meritorious award. It is, in only in a small way, could it recompense him for all the time, effort and the good he has done uh, for those in his own area, the high esteem which he is held by his peers and the great respect in which he is held is extremely obvious to anybody who ever asks anybody in the Wheelchair Association of Martin Rainsford. I hereby recommend him for a prestigious award of service, towards service of the year award. Bill Reedy 
is one of those who has been to the forefront. He has given his time and his energies to the promotion of Gaelic games. The association would not be what it is today but for the dedication of people like Bill Reedy. Um, Bill not alone has been involved at primary school level but also at club level and at county level. Anyone moving out the Ennis Road on any day would see Bill Reedy coming out from JF with a group of youngsters with hurdies under their arms. Bill would be looking for a field to bring them, to train them and to coach them. He would be heading for Shelburne Park, or for the Gaelic Grounds, or out to his own club, the Pearshick. That is after his school hours. He gives on all of his time, I know it, I know it for a fact, that day after day, Bill can be seen with these young fellas. In the summer evenings, Bill gets home, I'm sure grabs a cup of tea, and he's back to the Pearshick. He is then on the field with the youngsters once again, and sometimes with the adults, who he also coaches. There has been great demands on Bill's time, not alone at school and at club level within the Pearshick, but also with the clubs around the county. He is in great demand to attend at their clubs, to coach their players, and to train their teams. He has a tremendous record behind him with success, with the successes of these teams. Bill is also involved in administration. I just know, don't know where he gets the time. Not alone with the lads, but also at administration level. He has been chairman of the school's board for a number of years, and he has been a colleague of mine on the Pearshire Committee, where he has worked so hard with the underage players over the years that we have brought to the club, I think it's six years in a row, the failing and way. It is a difficult competition to win, but we have won it six years in a row, and Bill Reedy has played a huge part in ensuring that. If I were to ask what is his greatest Asset, what has he given most of? If you were to be in a dressing room with Bill Reedy prior to his teams going onto the field, you would know. He is the best motivator that I know. If you see those JFK lads, or if you've seen the Pearshick underage teams going on the field, they bounce onto that field and they hurl like demons. And I can tell you that it comes from the motivation, the pep talk that Bill has given them in the dressing room prior to moving out on that field. At the start, of the, the, when we had a meeting of our advisory committee, Jerry and Mary warned us all that we had two minutes to say a few words. It would take 32 minutes, I'm sure, if we were to adequately cover all of the involvements of, the, of Bill Reedy in sport. It gives me the greatest of pleasure to be able to say that Bill Reedy is truly an unsung hero of sport for Mount.
He first started with the local junior club, Shelburne ASC, situated in the famed Tumagate area. He had many years of sterling service to this club on the playing field before an injury cut short his career. The administration side of the game and occupied various positions in his own club, but mainly as his treasurer. He did so much for this club that he became known and is still known as Mr. Shulgren. He entered the committee of the local district management council some 25 years ago and served two years on the committee and then became its vice chairman. Yes, he spent 17 years as vice chairman to Mr. Jackman and for the past five or six years has now become its chairman. Um, he has been involved in the purchase of Prairie Park, development of the grounds such as changing and short facilities, committee room, enclosing of the playing area, building of a covered area for spectators, um, Billy made forte in all his work has been his ability to procure sponsorship. And today, through his efforts, all the various league and cup competitions are sponsored by the Hartlager firm. This committee hope in the very near future, and Mr. Minister will be paid a visit tonight, I'm sure, they're going flood diving Prairie Park. And this will be the first grounds in Munster with, that will have such provision. This committee, they cater for 56 clubs and roughly around 4,000 youths, or at least uh, juniors and minor players. Ladies and gentlemen, Billy Grimes is the most deserving award. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
and sadly, we will always have a need for Milford Hospice. We should be delighted that we have it, and we should ensure that we support it, whether financially or otherwise. Minister, I hope you won't mind me saying this. There's a lot of money in the lottery. All we want is only a few pounds. But I know, knowing you personally, I know you will do whatever you can do for us. But we do need it. And people don't realise it. 12, 13, 14 of us to raise £175,000 in a year. It's very, very hard going. So, Jerry and Mary, thank you very much. And thank you for having us here tonight. That's it, except to say there was to have been uh, one other presentation tonight, but unfortunately the recipient is in uh, America at the moment. Uh, it isn't very often we get a chance to pay due tribute to world champions, but uh, when they return, it will be done. Thank you very much. Thank you once again. Could we have the recipients, please, of the awards up here so that we can get a, a group shot, uh, please?
Would you just hide the label, please? The label. Hide the label. Just bring it around to the left. Jacket, 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 jacket,